What up, yo? Back. Got a 2019 Toyota Corolla hatch. I uh, put uh, lowering springs on it before, but it wasn't low enough, so went ahead and bought some D2 coilovers for it. Coils in the front, and then the independents in the rear. The springs and shocks are separate on this car. All right, guys, so check it out. I got a... I took off or the bolt that goes to the hub. So there's two of them here. Dark. But there's one here and then one here. And then uh, I left that one in because I want to take it off. And then the whole hub and everything is going to fall down. So that's just sticking in there to support it. And then here are your two bolts, which are size 22 wow. millimeter. So with that just being held on right there. Okay. And then there's uh, the bracket back here as well for your, uh, I think it's your brake speed sensor and your brake line. And that is a 14 millimeter here. And then up top on the driver's side, it's a little bit harder. So there's three bolts, one here, one right here. And then I'm not gonna get the camera back there but there's another one kind of right here where my finger's at. And I took off the windshield wiper here and also moved this. I think it's the um, the windshield wash or the windshield wiper like motor or assembly. And then you can just lift this up out of the way to get the socket back there. So it's right right here right where my fingers at so pick that up to get a socket unless you got a tool that can is small enough to fit in there I just loosen that bolt pick that up and then I'm able to get that bolt out so I'm gonna go ahead and get the last bolt out this is gonna come down and then I'll take this bolt out and that whole shock will come out in one piece also I forgot to mention is to so make sure you take this off as well before you pull this out because it is on the strut and you don't want to rip this. What daddy? Front left goes on the driver's side. Front right goes on the passenger side. So we're doing the driver's side. And we're gonna do the driver's side first. So front left. And it doesn't come with hardware, so we're going to use the factory hardware, make sure it fits, threads all the way down, and it, co it, it comes not set, so straight out of the box, it's not set. Even the locking collars are loose, so we're going to make sure that those are tight the way it sits and then I'll adjust the height here when um, we put the car down and see where it's all right guys so we got the coil over and a lot of people do this wrong but this has adjustable camber on the top and you want to make sure that the camber adjusts this way so the top hat will sit in there like this you can see the two holes in the back and the hole in the front so when you adjust the camber you can adjust it accordingly um, and then here on the bottom this is your locking collar to adjust the ride height and then your two locking rings to adjust your spring rate these both um, you can see out of the box they're already loose so I'm gonna make sure that I tighten those. And I'm not gonna tighten this one yet until I get it on the ground and adjust the ride height. So we'll, that'll determine. Um, I'm gonna do measurements on the springs so I can adjust the spring rate as, as well. Just tighten it as tight as I can by hand. And then I'll set the locking collars to that and then measure it to measure for the other side to make sure that they're both equal. Let's go ahead and throw this um, throw this in. I'm actually gonna adjust the camera a little bit because his wheels in the front are gonna rub the fenders. 
so it's only gonna need a little bit so i'm just gonna leave the screws where they are and then max it out so it's only gonna be um what well, i don't know i think every big line is one degree so it might only be like one degree i'm not don't quote me on that because I, I don't know if that's absolutely true but uh, i'm gonna just loosen these up max the camber out just right here not max it out completely but um just to give it that little bit extra clearance on the front wheels and i'll explain a little bit more when yeah. it's all on and the car's on the ground and i'll show you guys the camera all right guys so this is what i'm doing to measure so i'm using that gold plate up top for a starting point and then for the spring rate um, I did seven and a half inches to the bottom of the spring. Uh, it's kind of bright. It's kind of hard to see, but the bottom right there, you can see seven and a half. And then down to the top of here is nine and a half. So I'm going to use that as a starting point and then work off of that. So I'll match the other side to those measurements. And so I can get them both equally equal. And then uh, when I drop it down, we'll see how it sits and work off of that. All right, guys, so got the front on, the wheels are back on. Uh, like I said, I should have um, did a before and after, but obviously he's gonna need an alignment because of camber and because it's lowered. But it's uh, the lip is pretty much flush to the fender now. Before, the tire was sticking out maybe half inch quarter inch something like that so now when i drop it um shouldn't have any issues rubbing unless you go lower but for now probably gonna lower it to probably about right above the tire just to get rid of the, the wheel gap um and yeah that's pretty much it got it all buttoned back up i gotta put the clip in back on that side but front's done we're gonna jump in the back. All right guys, jumping back, or jumping into the back side. And the D2 coilovers, like I said, uh, it's independent in the rear. So you have the shock here, and there's just a two bolts up top. And then there's a bolt back here. Um, I'm not sure what size that is, it might be a 19. Uh, I'll check right now. But the two up top, which are these ones, are a 17 so that's just those right there um i'm going to remove that bottom one right now let's see what is this this is a 19 oh no, it's not it's actually bigger so it's actually a 22 bottom the bottom one and then um like i said he has lowering springs right now so there's not that much tension on the lower control arms but if you're doing this from stock you want to make sure you put some type of support underneath here um a jack so jack it up till it hits and then maybe half a pump up and then loosen this bolt take this bolt out and then um once this bolts out, you can slowly lower the jack to release that um, tension on the spring and the control arm. All right, y'all, so like I said, I have my jack underneath the control arm now. And uh, it's actually a 14, this bolt here. And then on the back side, there's a nut. And that nut uh, is a 17. But you actually don't need to hold it on the other side because it has these little dowels on it, which uh, they're kind. Of, it's kind of like another specific term. It's a, like a locking nut, so that it locks on. And then if you hit it with like impact or something, it'll break it loose, and you'll be able to get it out.
now the bolt's out. So there's no tension on our, uh, all the tension on the jack now. Release the jack, lower control arm comes down. And like I said, if you're doing it with stock springs, there's more tension on there, so be a little bit more careful. But this one, there's lowering springs, so that's it. All right, guys, so I ran into a little speed bump here. Um, like I said, I was gonna take off the shock down here. But let me get down here and show you. So you can see here this um, stud, I guess is what holds this, but you can't pull the shock all the way off the stud because it bottoms out back here. So you have to, um, sorry, I'm trying to get some light back here, but you have to take off the stud completely. So I was worried that this was gonna be reverse threaded, but thankfully it's not, it was just on really tight. So I have this long, um, the 12, a 12, uh, 12 millimeter, so now I can uh, take that off. So this is a stud that the shock sits on. So the shock sits on like that. This bolts to your hub. You have to un unscrew this and you see on the end right here, the 12 millimeter right there. Bolt that, shot comes out like that. So let's go grab the coilovers now. All right guys, so jumping into uh, the coilovers. Uh, obviously we have the shock body here and we have the coilover here. And I went ahead and put the rubber grommet on the top and then kept the rubber grommet as well on the bottom there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it very well. Um, but I maxed out the spring for now. Like I said, once we lower it, we can adjust accordingly. And then for the shock, we have to use the stock top hat. So um, there's an Allen key in the middle and then a 17 millimeter bolt. And as you can see, what I have here my 17. And you have to use the Allen key because um, that shock will spin freely. So there you go. Now should be able to get this bolt out by hand like that, and then. Take off the stock shock. And being that this coilover has its own dust boot, um, I'm gonna take off that bump stop and this dust boot because this has its own bump stop and its own dust boot. So and there we go. Pops out like that that with the stock stuff and let's go ahead and put this on now all right guys so got the backs in it was a little pain to line up the shock on the bottom that bolt because you got to put the bolt in here and then screw it back in to this assembly the wheel assembly and uh it was just kind of a pain to get it perfectly right because obviously you don't want to cross thread those and ruin that but anyways got that in uh the shot uh, the springs in now what i do to adjust the shock length is you see how there's a little bit of space right here so i'm gonna twist this by hand until that is gone until that spring is buttoned up against the car so it's bottomed out now. So now at full droop on the rear suspension, that spring will have no movement. That spring will never pop out or never have any issues um, with, this, with the spring. So now I'm gonna measure this. And like I said, do it 
um, the same on the other side. So that's pretty much what I do for adjusting the shock. Now the spring's in there, nice and tight. I might do another turn or two just to get it nice and snug, but I don't want it too tight. Um, but yeah, so now we still got a lot of travel on the suspension going up and down. So the shocks won't blow out if it bottoms out or anything. Granted, it does have a bump stop, but still you don't want to max out those shocks. So like I said, full droop, spring is in there nice and tight. It's all good to go. So I'm gonna measure that out and uh, finish up on the other side. All right, guys. Well, hope the video helped out. Um, I don't think there's much on these cars, but like I said, D2 coilovers and uh, full install. If you guys have any questions, let me know. This is where it sits right now. Um, I'm gonna adjust it a little bit, adjust the suspension, get the fitment right. But um, he can drive it, it doesn't rub. Eventually he's gonna get his fenders rolled in the front and then I'll probably take out the fender liners so it's not rubbing because right here, you can't see it, but there's barely a, a finger gap right there from the fender liner. So that's um, gonna rub on bumps and stuff. But the back, is good uh sits sits good i like it um i can take out the locking collars in the back or the um yeah locking collars or whatever the back i can do a few things to lower the back a little bit with these springs but if he wants to go lower he's gonna have to get uh smaller springs for the rear the front has a lot more adjustment so i'm not worried about that but um he's new to the low life so you can get used to it and then we'll work on it from there. But I think it came out good. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, comments, or need help on a similar install, let me know, leave a comment, like, subscribe. This video helped out in any way. Peace out.